Hi, I'm Addy Vanderbeek. I'm hanging with the Z-Man. Hey fans, welcome to my shop. Hanging with the Z-Man, episode four starts right now. That's good. Okay, so for episode four, what we're gonna do with Zach and the 33Z is go through the process of scaling the car. Now there are two types of scaling in racing, in dirt track racing anyway. The first scale is when you pull off the track, pull on the scale, and you check your weight to make sure you're not running light. Um, we've all been at the races where somebody gets DQ'd for being a little too light. They go out on the scale, come back out on the track, run through a bunch of mud puddles, go back on the scale again, try to get that weight right. Um, we're talking about the second kind of scaling, which is setting up the car. So the first thing that you got to do before you scale the car is actually pull out the left rear axle. Zach's going to show you that real quick and why you do that. Yeah, we, uh, you want to pull the axle out uh, because most of the time when you're setting the car on the scales, you have it off the ground. So when you have a solid axle system on the rear end, you want to take, you want to loosen up one side from the other. That way when you set it down, there isn't a bunch of extra scrub and, and bind in the rear end, which can can increase your your bite your wedge numbers that we'll talk about that later but basically it's really simple you just you just pull three bolts out if your axle or axle tube isn't bent they should come out just really easy just by pulling on it with your hand and then you're ready to set it down on the scales and go through all the other steps before you uh, scale, which is set tire pressures, um, unhook shocks if necessary, and uh, just make sure that uh, you got the scrub out of the front tires and uh, you got the proper amount of, of fuel in the car and that. So we'll go through that in a little more detail. We're ready to set it down. Cool. So Zach, you don't actually pull the axle all the way out of the axle tube. You just disengage the gear that's on the the inner part of the axle with the ring and pinion gear. Yep, that's right. You just uh, you just want to unlock it from the splines from the outside drive flange. So this this wheel now will turn without the right rear turning. So they're disconnected essentially. Um, sometimes this is a, a part that can that can fail in a race. Guys have uh, DNS because the car is, is is not drivable with uh, just one axle. The car can't just drive with one tire just go in a circle or or uh, just really ill handling so cool well let's get this car set on our scales and uh, show you how the whole process works before we set the car on the scales I wanted to show you a little bit more in detail what a scale is and how we how we actually set them up underneath the car um, I choose to use long acre scales um, there's different scale companies out there um, I always want to have a, a tall stand for the scale to sit in. That way, it's easier to get under and make adjustments while you're scaling. Some guys do it on the floor, but you got a you got a really tight space underneath there. So it's nice to have it off the ground a little bit. The other thing important about your stand is most concrete floors are not level, so you want to have some sort of adjustment, whether it be bolts or pads, that you can get the scale level. Um, you want to level have each pad perfectly level, and you also want to have each pad the same height. All four pads need to be the same height. And uh, another thing is we just we usually just mark the floor for where our pads sit. And uh, I'll slide it up here, yeah, right in, my, right in my, my circles that I made on the floor. You want to get that consistent every time. That way you have consistent scale numbers. I wanted to show you guys the, the computer side of the scales here. This is basically the control panel for um, your wheel weights and uh, you can check the, the cross percentages, the left side, rear percentage and stuff like that. So um, right here you have um, your left rear, right rear, right front, left front. Um, they show your their actual wheel weights on that, on that particular tire. Um, what we're kind of looking for is a few different things when we're scaling. Um, one important thing we look for is the rear percentage. Um, usually I can just go over here and press the rear button. That shuts the front two scales off. 
and it reads the rear percentage to me. Another thing that we check is left side. That's an, another important. That's the left side weight of both tires. So it shuts off the right side scale, so it just shows me that percentage. Um, those are really the most important ones right there. Another thing that we pay attention to is the difference between the weight between the left rear tire and the right rear tire. That's what they call either wedge or 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 left rear bite. Um, there's I've got one scale unhooked for obvious reasons. This car is ready to go for Baytown, so I want to give that information away. But uh, I just wanted to show you kind of the stuff on the computer side of it that uh, we go through to make sure our percentages are correct. Okay, so Zach. You showed us your little computer over there, and now that we know where the numbers are at on the car right now, what is the first thing that we have to do to get this baby scaled and ready to go? Well, like you said, we review the numbers, kind of see where things are at. That doesn't tell me a whole lot until I know that my ride heights are correct. Um, that's one of the things, the first things that I do um, is make sure those are right, um, not only for as, as simple as having the baseline, having it correct every time you scale, but it's also a key part of, of weight uh, transfer and getting the balance right on the race car. Okay, so for those that don't know, um, and like me, not too long ago, when you talk about the ride height of the car, how do we actually change the ride height of the car? Well, you, uh, you get a series of weight jacks um, are, are on all four corners of the car. Um, the front is a conventional style spring because we're still restricted on, we still have to run a manufactured stock front end. So uh, the conventional springs or style springs are still used in, in open modified. So essentially a weight jack is just a screw run through the frame, goes into a cup that the spring sits in. So when, when you tighten the spring or the screw down, that's going to compress the spring more. When you do that, it stores more energy and actually makes the car race. So you're adding rate to the, that spring, so the car only weighs so much, so it's, it's got to lift the car. Um, in the rear, you've got a coilover system that, uh, that there's a, a threaded sleeve that goes over your shock, and it has a cup for your spring to sit on, and you can adjust that. Um, that is how you, it's, it's essentially kind of the same as the front, but it's on the shock and you can tighten it down or loosen it to do the same thing. Cool. So, okay, let's say that we've got our ride heights adjusted right where you want them, but maybe there's a number that's not quite right. What, what, if there was something that was typically kind of off after you set your ride heights, what might that be? Um, Probably the next step after you get your ride heights correct, I don't pay attention to numbers a whole lot because you can manipulate the numbers where you want after your ride heights are correct if you if you do the proper turns around the car. So um, next, in, in, in the way I scale, would be uh, left side percentage and rear percentage, getting that close, and that's controlled by as simple as moving weight around. So we, we have lead weights that we put on the car that uh, you can put in different positions to achieve the percentages that you want. Another way to add weight is, is obviously we, we need to have fuel in the car. So um, that can be kind of a tuning tool as well. Um, so that uh, to get those percentages, you have to move the weight to the proper locations. Got it. So for if we're using fuel, for example, to help dial in um, the weight of the car when we're scaling it, what you're kind of doing is figuring out a minimum amount of fuel in the tank after a run and that can vary um, by a gallon or two maybe. Um, I know that there's some of your longer races that there's kind of a, uh, a bare minimum that you do, but what's kind of a, a range of minimum amount of fuel you like in the tank when, when you're done with the race? Well, you gotta just kind of assess how much fuel you burn in a, in a feature. And uh, if you burn, you know, if you're on gas, you're burning anywhere from probably six to eight gallons. So um, kind of what I figure in my stuff is I, is I fill the cell to the point um, where there's only that much capacity left in the cell. So we fill it for the feature, you're down, you burn your seven or eight gallons off, and that gets you to where 
your scale in the car has. So that, that's kind of how you get your target rear percentage number. Cool. So now that we've got the ride heights adjusted, we've moved some weight around in the car, some static weight, like you say, the fuel, the lead weights. You've got uh, the percentages where you want because you say you're more worried about the percentages than the numbers themselves. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, you, obviously there's still total weight involved. Sure. Um, sometimes you got to sacrifice being a little heavy to, to get the proper percentage that you want, but uh, um, you still want to have that optimal rear percentage, the optimal left, and, and you know, when your right heights are all set, the only other thing left is, is that, that I really focus on is the difference between, like I talked about when I showed you the, the scale, the computer, was the difference between the left rear and the right rear. And uh, that, that's a wedge number or a bite number. And we shoot for a range there, depending on track configurations, we kind of adjust that a little bit. But uh, that's another really key tuning tool um, to make the car work right. Got it. So at that point, are you basically done scaling the car? There's a series of different adjustments. These cars have a lot of different things going on. Um, another thing when you're scaling is to be consistent. Um, we have four bar suspension, which is four bars that tie the axle to the, to the chassis, and, there's, and it's just a four link suspension. Um, Chris can probably show you an illustration of that on this video. Um, but uh, we, uh, you want to have those in the same holes on the chassis every time. That way you're consistent because having those in different holes and, and then changing them at the racetrack can, can manipulate your numbers just a little bit. So that's, uh, that's one thing you, you have to watch. Um, you've got uh, your pan our bar angle. You've got to make sure you get the right angle there um, at the correct ride heights. Um, your rear end left to right. Um, Opinion angle. Their list can go on and on. I can get in pretty good detail talking about all that, but uh, without showing you, it's hard to kind of explain. So we'll maybe look at some of the finer tune adjusting that might happen once we get the car out on the track and we're on the road with video equipment and et cetera, et cetera. We'll, we'll try to take a look at a few of those things. I'll work on those animation of graphics that he threw in there. <laughs> I'm not too sure about that, but I'll try to come up with something. <laughs> So we'll get the car down off the scales and um, I think that basically wraps up what we're going to talk about this time for uh, scaling the car. Thanks Zach. Um, who do you want to thank? Uh, any sponsors you want to thank today for episode four? All of them. All of them? Well there you go. All our sponsors. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's been a good day. So. Zach, when are you uh, heading to Baytown? Um, we're leaving uh, the 19th and uh, give us a kind of a cushion to get down there and test a little bit on a practice day and have three good nights of racing hopefully and I like that place so we're looking forward to going down there again of course. So. And where are you heading after Baytown? Uh, we got a weekend off my daughter's birthday and so we'll come back and enjoy a little family time and family is racing, racing's family in my, in my book so We'll uh, make that our priority that weekend, and then we uh, go back into Kansas, and then we're kind of steady for a while every weekend and until we get into some week weekday racing and stuff like that. Great. Well, everybody, thanks for coming by. Thanks for supporting our videos. Um, it's really important to us that you uh, like them on Facebook and share them with your friends. Um, it just means a lot to the race team and, and Zach and his family, so we appreciate all of that. Special thanks this week to um, Buck Munson Photo. He was here helping us out with a bunch of stuff. We did a photo shoot last night and that stuff's going to turn out really cool. So um, again, thanks for stopping by and uh, hold tight for episode five coming soon. Boom diggity. <laughs>